Welcome to Metagame, everyone. Am I, am I on? Yeah, my speaker's up. Perfect. Welcome to Metagame. My name is Tennyson Eastead. I'm the creator of Jump Rangers. This is a semi weekly gaming stream where we get together and we play the game with some of the creators of Jump Rangers. I'm going to take just a quick moment to introduce everybody. Um, and then, because we have a new player today, we're going to take a brief second to discuss the ethics of tabletop role playing. And then we'll begin. Uh, so first of all, we have Federico Esteval, who is Esteval, who is our, um, our our art director and our currently only concept designer. Federico, please say hi. Hello, people. How are you? It... Yep. Ippy Looney is a voice actor and the love of my life here in Los Angeles, California. Ippy Looney, say hi to the people. Hi to the people. And joining us for the first time is producer Lucinda Bruce, who is currently working with me to prepare for the crowdfunding launch at Comic-Con 2024. And Lucinda is joining us as uh, a misling nomad by the name of Saudade. Is that correct? Saudade, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Los Angeles. Thank you for joining us. So uh, before we get started, just some brief notes for Lucinda. This is a consent-driven entertainment medium, Lucinda. So if anything makes you uncomfortable, please speak up as soon as that starts to happen. Um, you are always free to pause the game. Just say timeout. We'll take a timeout. If there's something bothering you, we'll fix it. If you just need a second, that's fine too. Everybody is always free to back out of a session at any time and for any reason whatsoever. So you can just say, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Lucinda is joking. And and the reason we do this is because we absolutely need to make sure that the people that we're playing with are safe at all times because this can't be fun if it's not safe. Um hate speech, bullying, failing to listen to people who are speaking from their own personal experience, which is an act we call silencing in the rules of Jump Rangers. These are instantly bannable offenses. <laughs> we do not allow these things in this game. Um, and a big part of the reason is because this is a community built around creating fun for kids. <laughs> so if, if you have the inability to listen to children or to people who are speaking from their personal experience, this is not the game for you. Um, and I'm saying these things out loud because this is Lucinda's first session. We're kind of crashing. There's a session zero usually when you do a role-playing game, Lucinda, where you sit down, you hammer out the rules, you build a basic structure um, for maintaining safety and maintaining consent. Um, this is a game, obviously, where we're going to be dealing with issues like colonization because we have a giant dinosaur space empire that's rolling through planets and taking them over. We had a little discussion about that in our session zero, just to make sure that everybody's comfortable engaging those themes, that everybody's trusting everybody else to talk about those themes in a, in a realistic way. If anybody needs to say something up front or create boundaries or anything like that, we create a space and a time for that. Um, because gaming culture can go one of two ways. And we have to be very conscious about which way we're going. Because like any gaming community, our gaming community is going to be vulnerable to the influence of online internet special interests. And, and we're going to be resolute. I look forward to the day when people start accusing Jump Rangers of trying to brainwash kids into a woke state of mind. My name is Tennis instead. You can find me on the internet. Here's the target. <laughs> That's how that works. So thank you for joining us. Um, when last we left our intrepid heroes, Clyde and Sneakers, uh, 
our jump rangers were um, stowed away aboard a Saurian mothership, believing themselves to be en route to a planet called Battleground, where they were going to deliver some intelligence to General Arden Paxis. But in spying on the Saurian uh, bridge and stealing information from uh, from the Rexors who are working the controls of this mothership, our heroes have ascertained that, in fact, this mothership is not going to planet Battleground at all. It's going to a planet called Planet Link. Oh, no, not Planet Link, excuse me, Planet Rock, um, which is a planet that has just been discovered by the, by the, the House Creech, which is the Saurian house in charge of this mothership. And they found some very interesting radiation readings, which they believe will yield exciting mining opportunities and allow them to steal power and control. They're going to try and get those mining operations underway before any of the other Saurian houses know what they're up to. Right now, that's all that these jump rangers know, if I'm correct, about where this mothership is going. You didn't know you were going to rock yet? Well, that's what that's what the Saurians are calling this planet. How can we see when we are arrived to Lagos or Lagos? Can we see it in any form? No. Yeah, but I don't. Yeah, but I don't think we got to the. I don't think we got to the point where we knew what, that we were um, going to um, rock. We just knew we weren't. <laughs> All right, so I gave it away, uh, but that's that's the name of the that's what the Saurians are calling the planet that you're going to, Federico. Uh, you don't know exactly when you're going to arrive, but um, the time comes soon enough when you can actually hear the jump drives of the massive mothership slowly start to shudder and grind as as the as the ship starts slowing through jump space. Um, and 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 decelerating on its final approach. There's a number of sounds that you recognize as telltale signs that the the uh, you know the ship is is preparing to end the jump, and 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 soon enough, <coughs> the whole ship shudders as it exits jump space and starts descending through an unknown atmosphere. And as we do this, we're going to take a moment. And observe a small Spartan little warren inside a massive cave with a little candle, a number of strange misling artifacts, and a little tiny space mouse. <laughs> Sleeping in a bunk in a tiny little cave somewhere on planet rock. Um, little hollow in the side of the wall, kind of carved and chiseled out. There's a bunch of blankets thrown in there. And there's a mouse sleeping in a cloak with a little bit of armor and a beautifully ornate staff with little bits of technology kind of fixed to it and a glowing ultraviolet gem embedded in the side of it. it. Looks like octonium, but it can't be octonium because it's not blue. <laughs> Something very strange going on with this piece of technology. You're double hearing me? You're muted? OK. Are you hearing me twice, Federico? No. OK, I think you're. I think you're hearing me once in your ear and once from my face is what's going on. So don't worry. Yep. So, so, um, <laughs> yep. Well, hang on, Federico. Hang on, Federico. No, 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 no. This is a different scene. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. 
until an acolyte of the Mistling Nomads, dressed in very simple robes, not yet with a star pike of their own, descends down the face of the cliff outside your warren, Sadati, and makes their way, and you can hear the light footsteps of another Mistling entering your, your chamber. You sit up. There's a very humble um, Mistling acolyte who is still working their way up through the, uh, through the training, someone who's here basically at the service of the elders, and says, uh, Asadadi, Master Darwin, would like a word with you. Master Darwin is one of the most venerated Misling nomads and the person who winds up training just about every Misling that comes through the, through the nomad chambers, through, through, this, through the halls of sanctuary. So just outside these warrens, there's kind of a chasm and netting and things have been thrown down the side of the chasm, so mislings have easy access to the warrens themselves. But there isn't really a walkway because mice are pretty good climbers. So, I can also just teleport right up to the. So right up, right up to the top, there is a huge cavern made entirely of citrine that channels sunlight and starlight from the surface of planet rock down into the caverns where sanctuary is built, and that's where most of the business of the Misling Nomads takes place. There's symbols carved in the citrine all around everybody. Kind of, there's a little kind of amphitheater where Master Darwin holds his court and teaches all the early nomads. There's little trading posts where certain nomads that are making the rounds will bring things from parts of the Misling sort of colonies that they've been given. There's all kinds of hustle and bustle. And as you teleport your way up there, you find Master Darwin, who's an old mouse. And it's, he's worn the same cloak his entire career, so it's tattered and beaten. His star pike is glowing with all kinds of octonium crystals of all sorts of various colors and descriptions. And he reaches out his hand and pauses his students as he sees you waiting for him, and he makes his way up out of the amphitheater and says, and he waves over another, another master to take over his class. He says, Sadati, I've consulted with Moldavite, and I have a job that we need you to do. I'll ask you to come with me. Now, Moldavite is one of the natives of Planet Rock. Moldavite is a giant rock being made of amethyst who millennia ago laid down in the crater above where the nomads now make their home and simply grew into the surface of the crater. Moldavite was an accomplished astronomer, and when he laid down, his amethyst kind of grew into the surface of the crater and eventually became just a massive cracked open geode. And he just lies there and watches the stars. So, um, and he could see vast distances, and it was Moldavite who first attracted the Mistling Nomads to Planet Rock many, many years ago and kind of befriended them when they were looking for answers and ways to help their home planet against the Saurian Horde. Moldavite was part of how they figured out that they could use the spore and the bugs to drive the Saurians off their world and save their planet. So, out through the front door, there's a massive tunnel which tells the entire history in, in pictographs of the history of the Nomads. And then you're out on the radiation-blasted surface of planet rock. Behind you is the crater. So you climb all the way up over the top of the crater, and you start making your way down into a beautiful forest of amethyst crystals. And this is where mislings go to speak to Moldavite and commune with Moldavite. And this is where you're walking now with Master Darwin. You can feel the energy of Moldavite. Your spirit is very attuned. There's consciousness all around you. You're never alone when you're in the amethyst crater. Moldavite speaks very much like tremors in your mind, sometimes through imagery and sometimes through words, but um, always effortlessly and never violently. And Moldavite speaks to the both of you now. So, Dottie, I have a request to make of you.
the Saurian Horde has come to Planet Rock. Um, they don't know it yet, but they haven't come alone. So I'm going to ask you to mute in between in between comments, but thank you very much. <laughs> I was distracting myself with my own echo. There are two travelers on board their spaceship. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a good point. It's a very good point. There are two travelers who've come aboard their spaceship that they are not aware of. Those travelers, I believe, may hold the key to driving the Saurian Horde from Planet Rock, and they may be the key to preventing a war between the Saurians and the Rockman people who inhabit this world. It is not necessary or advised to allow these travelers to know of the existence of sanctuary. But they will need your help and your guidance. I am asking you to give them both in the interest of protecting the Rockman beings who have given the Misling Nomad sanctuary on this world and in the interest of protecting sanctuary itself. The future of this world depends on it. Very well. I can show you where they will land and I can send you there. <laughs> a hill overlooking a blasted plane. You've known from experience that you need to use your sense of spirit to detect radiation when moving across planet rock because with all of the different crystals growing here, this planet can microwave you pretty quick if you're not careful. <laughs> <laughs> the Rockman people have a very different physiology from mislings. Um, they're not biological in a traditional sense. And, and, uh, and you are. So please be careful. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, standing here, you can see what looks like kind of a massive black iron gothic jellyfish spaceship. Just a big dome, a big bell with big iron baubles hanging from the bottom side and black spires and weapons shooting off in different directions. Almost like a combination between something Spiegelberg and, and, and Tim Burton might build together. <laughs> descending from the sky on a pillar of hot blue flame as it makes its way towards the surface. And inside, Clyde and Sneakers, you can hear the entire spacecraft shudder <clears throat> with the sound of the descent of the mothership menacing. It's the menacing, right? Is that what we're on? I believe so. It's the menacing? Yeah. That's right. So. Okay, so you you had wanted to steal, um, you had wanted to steal sleds, hover sleds. Yeah. Oh, hang on one sec, Ippy Looney, you were muted just then, just to give you a heads up. Don't forget to mute and unmute yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So there's two kinds of hover vehicles in these hangars. You have one-person hover sleds, which are called drakes. Okay, and one you, know, you could probably put two jump rangers on it. It takes one under sort of pilot it, and they kind of lay down. They put their hands forward and their feet behind them, and their tail flaps out behind as they race across the ground. Drakes are used for patrols and things. And then, yep. Very much like a Tron bike, except it's hovering off the ground and it's a little wider than what you would expect a Tron bike to be. But yeah, you lay down on it. The other thing that they have are gators, which are hover trains. Now, you could, dis you could detach the engine of a gator, but gators are, are bigger. They're not just two-person craft. A gator is going to hold... I mean, a whole hover train is going to hold countless workers and, and, and whole cargo, you know, bays full of ore and all kinds of stuff. The gators are what? Too big and slow. Okay. <laughs> so you want, you want, do you want to still, do you want to try and both pilot one of these, one of these uh, drakes, or do you want to get two of them? Yeah, one? Yes, they are really big. Undersaurs are basically lizard men, shaped like professional wrestlers with tails, and and velociraptor heads. It's really hard for me to unmute myself to talk when you're constantly talking. I'm just saying, like, because I can't, if, if if I unmute myself, you are going to be echoey because it's going to pick you up. So if you want me to talk, you've got to give me a window. Because like I want to talk, but then I'm like, it, you you pass by me because I don't. I think I should. Do, we should do the bike. I'm just gonna say that, and then yeah. you can go back. I f I feel like I should just teleport in there and teleport you both out, but you know, that's just my thought. <laughs> Do you want to do you want to stretch out with your senses and see if you can detect the non-saurian life forms out here? Absolutely. All right. So what I need you to do, Sadati, is is grab your spirit dice. How many dice do you have in spirit? This is a teachable moment. This is when we do rule stuff. So grab six dice, six of your blue dice. Now, what do you have in your talents, in your in your training, and your and your virtues that applies to this situation? Nomad training always counts, so that's one. You are muted. Improvisation. That's two. Yep, I'll, I'll allow flickering. That's three. Dark senses. That's four. I'm courageous because I'm flickering into something. I don't know what happened. Okay, so your target number is five. Six. So roll your six I dice. Roll yep, and you're looking for fives and under. Tell me how many you get. And re-roll your one. Re-roll my one. I've got two ones. Oh, good. So I get another four. Nice one. Six. So six victories.
the two of you make your way down to the cargo, to the to the hangar base, and you start looking as, and you can see the underscores are starting to stir around. They're starting to prepare for the landing so they can deploy as quickly as possible. And you're you're looking at the hazmat suit that you stole, wondering if maybe you need to climb back into it and masquerade as an undersore on one another's shoulders again, and arguing about you know where to find the the drake that you're going to steal and all of a sudden out of kind of a flash of purple light this tiny little mouse in this little cloak with a face mask over her face and her little ears popping up materializes in front of you and grabs both of you by the pant leg <laughs> <laughs> and then and then <laughs> and then vanishes and all of a sudden you feel squashed and stretched at the very same time you're surrounded by blinding light and suddenly you're standing on a hillside on the very hot surface of planet rock um watching the mothership descend and there is a, sure enough, a misling nomad. Neither of you have seen anything quite like this before, but there's a tiny little, as I've described, becloaked space mouse. <laughs> she's, she's mute. Clyde, you know what is it? It's a missing. <laughs> do we know? Do we know? Don't have to shout it. She's a, she's she's the, the the mice race. Is that right? You've never heard of anything like this before, uh, sneakers. You don't know what's going on here. But it appears it it appears as though Clyde does. Well, she's the channel biology, so that's why I asked for her, because this is a very distressed situation. We we just got teleported from the ship. <laughs> you are correct, and and by the way, Sadad, you will notice that these creatures do not appear to speak any reasonable language that you've ever heard. They're just chattering in their stupid monkey language. <laughs> well, they can teleport too. It does appear. <laughs> it does seem... Clearly, the uh, the the misling nomad is is not understanding anything that you're saying. But if you want Saudad, you could try and communicate with them telepathically. You can try and set up a telepath. You have a strong spirit. All right. So you've got your you've got your you've got your six dice. Uh huh. Okay. 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 <laughs> right. Yes. Uh, 
I don't think you've ever been teleported that you know of. You've never seen anything quite like this. You're gonna. Try. Well, let's let me let me let me see. What? <laughs> Up a moment of panic. <laughs> yeah, you're standing. You're standing on a hillside, watching the. the... Yes, you have. Okay, you, uh, give me a second. Let me deal with the tele telepathy roll first, and then we'll deal with your efforts to not panic in just a second, Federico. Because you may actually have more reason to panic in a second. So, <laughs> you've got your six dice. Saudad, what? Tell me, tell me what, what? what this is improvising, and this is, and this is missling training. What else have you got? Lucinda, you're muted. Yep. Um, and I am <laughs> preparing myself to protect myself if I need to with my martial arts, just in case they over panic and try and attack me. I'm curious to discuss the point you made with the uh, 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 Federico is. I'm not. I'm not sold on the martial arts. <laughs> I like Federico's willingness to back you up on this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was. <laughs> the martial arts, the martial arts comes after. Was <laughs> after this doesn't work. Was <laughs> three. Got anything else you want to try and throw at this? You got anything else you can improvise? Sharp senses and and missling training. Yeah, yeah. All right. Roll your six dice. Let's see if you can set up a... Well, let me ask you this, guys. You feel a tickle at your mind, almost as if someone was probing your thoughts. You probably have experienced telepathy before. Do you fight the telepathy or do you push back against the telepathy? Do you, or do you just accept it? That's my question. No. You are a mind roll. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Yeah, this is this is your mind roll now, Federico. Yeah. Roll a mind roll. What do you have to destroy your mind roll for that roll? No, it's not just a situation, it's not to freak out. It's to roll a mind roll. Mm -hmm. No? For. <laughs> I, do, <laughs> I don't know. Training? Improve, maybe? Because the situation is expected? Con, if you can not speak out of fear. And that's it. I think that's it. There is, there is not else to do. I can hear you, can you? Oh, uh, there we go. Yes, yeah, so roll your dice and, and, and tell me what you get. Your, three, your, tar your target number is three. Okay. Roll your one again. Eight. Oh, but it doesn't count because it's a reroll. You're fine. So you got two two victories. With two victories, you can reasonably assume that this person, this mouse, would have killed you. I mean, they just teleported you out of a dangerous situation. They have not teleported you into danger that you're aware of. So 
if this was an attack. <laughs> <What's> that? <laughs> okay. So, here's what I'm going to say, is that this would have failed, this, this mental roll, but what you would be able to do in that case is roll it again as a combined effort now that everybody's trying to communicate and use their skills on top of yours, and that roll would certainly succeed. So you're going to wind up here with your telepathic network between these characters, and now you can hear each other's deliberate thoughts. You can communicate. So now we can just play with this interview. Yep, at each other. Can you hear what you, the mouth say something? <laughs> it's like magic. You know what is uh, uh, TP is, no? Your squirrels it. Your squirrel's inside your helmet, but your squirrel is an animal. Inside this range, so these these people are wearing space helmets, and inside, one of them's a little bit shorter, and that's this one. One's a little bit taller, and that's the other one. Inside the shorter one's helmet, there's a little animal kind of running around its head. It's got a fluffy tail and it's got little wings. It's like a. F Not here. A <laughs> squirrel. Let me speak to the intelligent one. It, as as near as you can tell, that is the one creature here that does not have any consciousness to offer you as a as a basis for communication. The squirrel appears to be hungry and thirsty. And not much else. It's friendly. It's a friendly animal. You can tell that using your, your telepathy, but it's not particularly smart. I don't want friends. <laughs> oh, but she's using a, a nail <laughs> space six, so here is intelligence, so we, we know we just can't, are able to communicate uh, in the best way. Sign language, so... The, the, your, your thoughts are, you're hearing you're hearing these thoughts in your head, Federico, and and your thoughts are being projected into their head, so now you are communicating. These thoughts that you're having are out loud, and 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 this mouse is sitting there looking at you with a somewhat frustrated and somewhat exhausted expression. Like, <laughs> as you sit there and you ponder the meaning of it all. Where are you from? Are you from this planet? Where I'm from doesn't matter. It's the fact that you're here now that matters. And we have work to do. Ooh, what do you want me to do? Wow. Well, uh, I'm a ranger. <laughs> I think we have we share have a common a interest. And I think that common interest will help us to defeat and get rid of the Saurians. And I believe that you can help with that. And I can help you with that. Let's look around if there are any Saurians in front of me. <coughs> well, there is the the mothership. The mothership. Let me answer Federico's question. Let me let me answer. <laughs> yep, yeah, you're muted. You did it. So to answer your question. Clyde, the mothership is 
even now, slowing down to a stable hovering space over <clears throat> over the massive plain, the massive basically dry lake bed that that you were descending over. And even now, cargo platforms are starting to descend down from the hovering mothership, loaded up with undersoar labor, loaded up with gator uh, hover trains, loaded up with supplies, and they're going to start establishing a base camp. The only other thing that you can see in the area is a what's called a wyvern, which is an undersource scout ship, which has been landed just off to the side of where the mothership is landing now. You you did notice the wyvern there when you first arrived, just to be clear, uh, a Saudadi. The, the Wyvern is one of the only ships with a jump drive that Undersores are allowed to pilot. And Undersore scouts are kind of among the most autonomous Undersores out there. The Saurian Horde will oftentimes just send Undersores out into space to find interesting stuff for them to come and take. And so they have scanning equipment there. It's dangerous being an undersore scout because they basically just send you off to die. They don't really care what happens to you. But it's also one of the only times that an undersore gets to live out from under the oppressive telepathic presence of, of the wreck source. <clears throat> so it's high risk, high reward work for undersores. And as a result, undersores, Undersource scouts tend to be badasses. They tend to be pretty awesome. They usually travel in clutches of eight, of course, because everything comes in groups of eight in this game. And um, and you can see that they've got a little camp of their own off to the side of where the mothership is setting up. So even now, they're, they're dropping down supplies. They're dropping down vehicles. There's a Rexor tyrant all suited up surveying the planet, taking in its first look at this wasteland. <laughs> this is this is what my life is like. You realize this, dear viewer. <laughs> this is not isolated. To, this is my marriage, what you're witnessing. <laughs> And shocking ambivalence <laughs> to the presence of these things. <laughs> Basically anything that you would think would get in a reaction and that instead is returned with shocking ambivalence. Yes, that is my marriage. <laughs> so yes, um, that's what's happening here. Are you wearing your multi goggles, Clyde? Okay. That's up. Why don't you guys take cover? <laughs> oh, your gear's on. Your gear's on because you were you were planning on going outside. So why don't you guys, why don't the two of you, just before anything else happens, make a roll to see how well concealed you are on this hilltop before you get spotted by somebody. Okay. And then we'll, we'll go from there, okay? Okay. All right. Here's Ippy Looney's character sheet. This is a this is a look at what we've got here. Um, <laughs> that also is the story of my marriage. <laughs> yep. I'm teleporting out of here. <laughs> Federico sent this one out too. Federico's already teleported out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I think 
All right. So we're going to see Ippy Looney. All right. So we've got four dice for mind to find a good to find a good to find a good hiding spot for Clyde. Uh, we're going to go with quick. We're going to go with spycraft, stealth, sorry, and horde and basic training. That's a target of five. One. You have one victory to hide. Presumably, they're not looking that hard for you. We'll see what happens. Uh, <coughs> sneakers, you want to give me a hide roll, a sneaky roll? You got one victory. <laughs> Absolutely true. Absolutely true. <laughs> oh they do but i'm i'm just i'm just that's true but i'm just i am just making sure i'm just making sure i know how hard that role is exactly and you don't want to be standing out there like a sore thumb as they start looking around to see what's going on. So, okay, one victory. I accept this. <coughs> I accept this. That works. Oh, yeah, reroll the one. All right. So, with <laughs> so you said now that you're on the ground, you've taken cover behind some rocks. And what's your name? <laughs> My name is Saudade. 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 Yeah. Like in Portuguese word, Saudade. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. Wow. Okay. One of my favorite words. Well, saudade. Uh, where can we go from from here? Uh, we were in a mission in another planet and just uh, arrived here. Uh, this is a very interesting planet. We never been here. We must learn more. We are in a in a in a, in a war with this alien race and been hunt by them for more than 2,200 years from now. It's very good to know another race and a culture. Yeah, well, it, let's do the, all the diplomatic I feel like uh, we're kind of like the TARDIS, right? Like, we didn't go where we were meant to go. We went where we were supposed to go, right? That sounds reasonable. <laughs> and in fact, that's what, what I was going to say. Uh, you think you were heading to this other place, but this is where you're supposed to be. And you have a message. And I believe that that message is why you're here. Oh, spiritual. Okay, let's go to... Let's uh, we, let's know the, the place that we need to, to, to go. The Avatar Tree. <laughs> let's go to the Avatar Tree. <laughs> the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Uh, we are rangers. We are human rangers. Uh, I am a nomad. Around. Uh, do you have ships? No. They don't have. I know they don't have. Just checking out. Why we are maybe we are walking to the place, is that right? I can teleport you. Ah, oh, you can <laughs> teleport. So let's go there. <laughs> Why would you go to the cliff? Problem is teleporting that you don't know where you are and where you're going. It's very disorientating for the ones. I'm who are going to. Yes, I'm going to take you 
and show you why it's important to save this planet. Then they can hear you. Oh, there we go. So we're picking up six dice over there with Saudade. Now tell me what you've got in your character sheet that can help you with this mission, with this effort. Um, improvisation. Yes. Like training. Yep. Like flickering. That's, I've got senses. That's four. And um, crazy because two to nine sort of not entirely sure where they're going to end up, but I feel like it's important that if I follow my um, senses and believe in that, it takes them wherever that I like that being courageous because I'm not really sure where it's going to be. Okay, I'll give you courageous. So five. So roll you roll your six dice into a target of five. Tell me how many victories you get. <laughs> That's right. We roll the one. Okay. <coughs> so impatiently, <laughs> Saudade grabs your the collars of your of your of your ankles, <laughs> and whoosh, wishes you away. Again, there's a burst of ultraviolet light. You're squashed and stretched and. Whammo! You're snapped back into existence in the middle of what I would describe as <coughs> a ruined hall. Now, there's disruptor blasts all over the interior of this hall. So, Dottie, you've seen spaces like this before. This is a traditional Rockman commune. They do things like astronomy in spaces like this. So <clears throat> it, the architecture is very simple and straightforward, but what they do is they make compositions out of the actual composition of the rock. So they can reach out and move different minerals in different ways. So there's beautiful swirls and illustrations created by actual striations in the rock that everything is made out of. And there's kind of two floors to this space. There's rough hewn stairs leading from the first floor to the second floor. Those stairs are split in half. And then off of this main hall, which has these two platforms and a number of pillars and things supporting it all, and all of the rock is, you know, basically layered in such a way that the colors themselves of this space is made out of are totally spectacular. You bored? <laughs> so, <clears throat> off to the sides of this central chamber, you can see strange glows of different colors. Every color of the rainbow. There's a chamber glowing red, there's a chamber glowing yellow, there's a chamber glowing green. And, and because this room has been blasted to pieces, there's also little glowing chunks <laughs> of octonium, not just blue octonium, but octonium in every color of the rainbow. There's glowing little shards all over the place, spread out across the floor along with the rubble. And the place has been blasted up um, by some kind of invading force. And both, I think, Clyde and Sneakers would assume that it was the scouts. The Undersource Scouts have been here and, and came. Yep. Now, they may come back. You don't know. So this place can't be too far from where you landed. But that's that's what you're looking at, is this. And, and the chamber is, you know, very solidly made. There's an exit to the outside. And you can see stairs leading down out into the plains. 
but you can't see the mothership from here. Even out through the door, you don't see... You don't... Okay, so you go out the door. That's where, that's where Sneakers is headed. And... <laughs> you can look around, Clyde. Sneakers is checking, checking, checking the, the lay of the land. You don't see anything on the horizon. So there, you're, this, this, this hall is built into a cliffside. And based on the position of the sun, you're going to go ahead and guess that, or the star, you're going to go ahead and guess that the mothership is actually behind you on the other side of the cliff. There's nobody, there's no people here that you can see, no beings. Although based on the size of the arcs that lead into each of these chambers, these buildings are made by and for beings that are much bigger than people. Substantially bigger. Big people. Why don't you why don't you go ahead and make a mind roll? What's your mind? What do you have to help you? What do you help what do you have on your character sheet to help you analyze? <laughs> well, that's a good roll, but what's your target number? What do you have on the character sheet? Talk to me about what's on your character sheet. Training. Yeah, I'll give you combat. That's two. Okay, so you've got... Oh. Okay, so to see if anybody's hiding. Okay, so that's three. I'll give you improvising as well. So that's four. <coughs> it can be. So go ahead and re-roll your ones. Tell me what you get. That's four so far. So you got another one? OK. No, you reroll the ones, Federico. You reroll the ones. Okay, so you got okay. So you have a you 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 scour the area. Um, first of all, you're gonna say that this place was torn apart about a week ago. Um, and and it was with disruptor blasts, Saurian disruptors for sure. So, the most interesting thing in this place is clearly the octonium crystals. There's octonium that's glowing red. There's octonium that's glowing orange. There's octonium that's glowing green and yellow. There's octonium that's glowing purple and, and ultraviolet. Why? Nope. And you can see chambers. You can see chambers that appear to be laced with this colored octonium off to the sides. And you imagine it's probably pretty radioactive. Maybe not dangerous, but certainly radioactive. You should be careful walking around outside. You should be conscious. And it be you have, you have, you have multi-goggles, so you can scan for safe places to walk. Clyde has the multi-goggles. So you can be careful, but you should be.
that's the right one. you take us from the hill to here? What was, why here? Like, why are we here, dude? Why? I wanted to show Somebody you, talk. I wanted to show you the importance of why we need to protect this planet from the invading forces. Sorry. And here you can see all of the, again, Octanian thing. Octonian. And, and here you see a natural source of Octonian, and it must be protected and kept out of the hands of historians at all costs. I want all of you to go ahead and make a mind or spirit check, target number four, and tell me how many victories you get. Roll your mind into a target of four. Tell me how many victories you get. Your mind. Look at your character sheet. How many dice do you have in four? So grab four dice. Your target is four. Roll them. Tell me how many victories you get. So take one away. Take one of your ones away. One of your successes of one of your victories away. You re-roll the one, yep. Did you get a donut? It's on the re-rolls, it's okay. Eights don't count on the re-rolls, so it just Okay. So Federico, you got you got one victory. Oh, they're gonna do you got two? But an eight, so you got two. Okay. So here's Zippy Loonies. We have a mind of four, so we're gonna grab these four dice. Target of four. Three, one, one, and five. So three. You got four victories, Zippy Looney. So you see sneakers watching very closely, very absorbing Sadati's every little every little inflection as Sadati very sternly explains that. He's been brought here to see how important this octonium is. You hear something rustling in the debris as this is going on. And as your attention is diverted, you see a little piece of red octonium crystal. I'm trying to choose my words carefully, and I'm trying to pace myself so I don't just talk and talk for no reason. I'm being deliberate in my word choice. Thinking of a word before I say it. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's a little piece of octonium. <laughs> there's a little piece of octonium rolling across the ground. And as it rolls across the ground, it starts to snowball up some of the debris and make itself into a little rock ball. And as it's rolling around, it rolls over a piece of orange octonium pulls a piece of orange octonium into its little rock ball. And as it makes its way around this room, it forges itself into kind of a little volleyball-sized chunk of rock. Making its way around the room, it peeks up a piece of yellow octonium, and then it peeks up a piece of green octonium. And then it rolls out the door. <laughs> I mean, this is nothing new for me. I've seen this before. 
I know, but you know. This guy made of rock. I don't know. I couldn't hear him. What to say? <laughs> so, this this little sort of volleyball sized soccer ball sized rock that's collecting debris and chunks slams its way down the front steps of the temple and then rolls off along the landscape. It just... <laughs> it does appear to be it does appear to have a mind of its own that's for sure you set out you set out into the wastelands of planet rock following the the what <laughs> I can't hear you, Ippy Loon. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. I'm going to follow the rock. I'm going to follow the rock. What are you to do? Hmm? What you going to do? I follow, I follow, I follow, uh, 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 Clyde because I'm like a good bodyguard. I think there are the chief is kind of biology. I follow because I know it's going to lead us where we need to be. Right. This thing rolls for hours. 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 Off it goes across across the plains. Soon you leave the hills of of that small little set. Well, that we're gonna make a roll to see, make sure nobody's falling behind. But there's soon you're just in this open plain. Now you guys have your 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 food packs, so you can get water, and you've got your little water flask. You can always go and get food if you need it. But I'm still going to ask everybody for a body check. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna check endurance here, and make sure that nobody's nobody's getting dropped along the wayside. We'll start with Ippy Looney because I have the character sheet right here. We have three dice in body, and this is basic training. Um, and I'm gonna say quick. Ah. What <laughs> <laughs> Is it mind or is it spirit? Okay, we'll call it spirit. So you've got basic training, and you've got sassy. Any anything else in there you think we should throw on it? You have quick. You have quick. You have spycraft. And Saurian Horde. Okay, so three. I'll give you th target of three. All right, you got one victory, which is enough to keep pace. And Lucinda and Federico, I'm going to ask you both for what 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 attribute do you draw on to keep going when it gets hot and tired? And... All right. What do you have to keep going? What do you have for basic training and what else? That's get counts. All right, so roll basic training and athletic and give me at least one victory. Two. Your target number is two. If you said athletic and basic training. Okay, all right. That, that'll count. That'll do it. No, no, you're good. You got the one victory. You're fine. 
All right. Lucinda. Yeah. So I'm going to say I know my training. Look, Rudy. So I'm just watching him walk while I sit and wait. And I just okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So you've got three. You've got three, and and this is. What would you say? What attribute are you? What what strength are you relying on to make your way across the desert here? Is this a test of spirit, or is this a test of mental presence? What would you say it is for you? Okay. All right. Roll your six dice into a target of three. Tell me what you get. Oh, really? Wow! Okay. So. You don't know. <laughs> so. As the two of you are making your way across this desert waste. Every so often, you'll see, um, you'll see Saudad kind of just whoosh with a with a burst of light into a little hidey space not too far from you. And after after a few moments. Of walking after one of those bursts, oh wow! You notice that Saudad is no longer whooshing. Saudad is not is not keeping pace with you. There's no more little bursts of light. There's no more. You don't know where the mouse is now, Saudad. I want you to roll body into a target of four. And tell me what you get. Reroll the one. Okay. All right. You don't. You don't. Um, feel like you've been hurt just yet, but you feel searing pain all throughout your body. And you're pretty sure you've just stupidly teleported yourself into a radiation spot. Like, <laughs> it, it, it feels like you're being microwaved. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. no worries. Oh, no, by all means, by all means, close your windows. So you don't see Saudade. You don't know where Saudade is. <laughs> just keeps on rolling on it just it keeps on rolling forward What's <laughs> okay all right you you feel you feel you, you 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 feel you feel you feel Saudadi's agony. Saudadi is in a lot of pain right now, and <sighs> okay, make a mind roll for that. Whoever's got the more mind, what's your? You have four. You have four in mind, Clyde. How many mind do you have? How many mind do you have, sneakers? Four. Okay. Who wants to lead the search? Okay. You both have you both have the same, but that's okay. You can do a teamwork search. So we're gonna add together Clyde, we're gonna give you three dice, and you can do a cooperative action. 
So we'll take one die away for Federico, okay? And then, and then we're gonna do. All right, do you need me to stop the game, honey? Okay, let's find Clyde. Sadat, yes. Where are you going? Okay. Oh. <laughs> so you are you are leading the search. You have, let's go ahead and switch this over. You have basic training. So that's one. Um, I don't know if this is so sassy. I don't know if this is com. I don't think this is combat either. You have basic training. You have basic training as well, Federico. So that's two. What else can you put on the roll? Improvising. Improvising. That's three. Quick, yep, yeah, that's four. Good call. Anything else? Okay. So we got one victory. What's that? Your target number was 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 three. Or no, was it was it, it was four, right? It was four. Okay, re-roll. Re-roll the ones. Okay. You managed to track Saudati down. Saudati's in the in the shadow of a rock, um, off to the side. And as you reach in to scoop the mouse out, you feel your fingers burning. Oh, no. <laughs> so I want you to roll your body. Yep, roll your body into a target of four. Tell me if you get... You got what? All right. So take a point of damage from from radiation as you scoop out as you scoop Saudati out from under the rock you scoop out the mouse and the t and so carrying 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 the nomad you make your way back to the rock as it rolls off towards the horizon and as day turns into night, you eventually follow the rock to a cave. The nomad is hot, but they, they're, con they're, they're breathing, they're conscious, I think mostly scared. Um, or, or let's say irritated and probably a little ashamed. Yep. And we're going to wrap this up because you guys are, you guys, it's getting, it is hot in here. Everybody's, everybody's a little irritable right now. So we're going to get an end to this. But basically, you make your way to this cave. And as you get deeper and deeper, you start to see a glow from inside the cave. And as you turn a corner deeper and deeper into the ground, there's more? Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Did you want me to end it there? Was that the end of the game? It was <laughs> okay. So, so you make your way deeper and deeper into the cave until moments later, you round the corner into a glittering hall full of octonium crystals of ultraviolet and purple and blue. And as the little ball rolls across the floor and picks up additional pieces of octonium rolling around, it eventually stops and starts to shudder. And 
very much as Federico has predicted, it unfurls itself into a little child-sized uh, person-shaped rock being with two very, very bright orange pieces of octonium for eyes. <laughs> the answers are going to have to wait until next Saturday because this is where we end our session of metagame and we let everybody <laughs> go cool down <laughs> but Lucinda, are you going to be around next Saturday to join us and continue our adventures on the surface of Planet Rock, do you think? Or is next Saturday a commitment? We'll see. Okay. All right. That being the case, thank you once again for joining us, Federico. Thank you very much for being here. Um, let me thank everybody for watching on YouTube and elsewhere. Um, to all of you out there in YouTube land, I'm going to say, don't be a stranger, Ranger. <laughs>